Well, well, look at this. It's eight o'clock in the morning and we actually have vendors. All right, let's start with a funny game of compare and contrast and why you should not always buy from the first seller who has something that you're interested in. And as many of you know, I have been very interested in picking up Lego lots, especially after my interview with Chris from Crispy's Toys and Treasures. So this seller wanted 10 bucks per bag, $50 for everything there. And based on all the Lego lots I've been picking up this year, I thought his price was a little high. He wouldn't negotiate. He laughed at me and told me that this was easily going to sell by the end of the day. So I said, okay, walked down a few vendor spots and came across this bucket, filled halfway with Lego pieces, picked it up for just $15. This was definitely the better deal. The other guy's stuff was still sitting there a week later, unsold. It's hilarious. So this thing had wheels in it, which you could sell the wheels in lots. You never know what you're going to come across, by the way. When you go through these, you come across crayons. You come across nasty Band-Aids. So sometimes you might want to wear gloves. Uh, you come across the minifigures, though, and some of those could be really valuable. I look for them as I go through the sets before purchasing. Uh, sometimes you got to put them together, so uh, it could be a little scavenger hunt. Sometimes these trees could sell well, bushes and stuff. So, you know, just be on the lookout, and you might even find jewelry. So, time to test if this is actually potentially silver. And there's a little magnet there. Let's try it out. Oh, no, because silver wouldn't be magnetic like that. So thumbs down. Mrs. Primetime will just put some charms on it and we'll use it that way. Then uh, there was another vendor who had this cool WMCR uh, a sign. It's for a radio station in Oneida County, but he wanted 15 bucks for it. So that was way too much. Cardboard sign, thumbs down. Uh, but then came across another vendor who had cooler looking WMCR signs really cool promo signs, you know, giving away a prize. And the signs really pop with the yellow and the pink. And the font was awesome, just a dollar per sign. So I picked both of them up, uh, selling them together as a lot, having my eBay store for $29.99. All right, folks. Well, we are out at Neighborhood Garage Sales. This is our first one. Uh, Mrs. Primetime is here, but uh, we are in separate cars today. So uh, we love driving around this area. We're gonna go find a place to park and uh, we'll start finding some treasures. All right, so let's start off at the first house with something you will likely come across in your sourcing adventures. It's Cards Against Humanity, a card game for horrible people. It should sell relatively quickly due to price point and popularity. I got it for $3. Now, this is an early base set with 550 cards. There's a lot of them out there, though, which is why this will only sell for around $19. But the one you really want to look for is the bigger, blacker box. That one sells for around $140 brand new. Meanwhile, Mrs. Primetime picked up a butterfly brooch for $0.50. Cents. Well, so far we're having a rough time of it. It's just been kid stuff after kid stuff after kid stuff. So hopefully our luck will start turning around here. Leave it to this $5 lot of faux fruit to start turning my luck around. If you don't know about the value of faux foods, click the link up top to learn more. I happily paid the five bucks for this to increase my existing listing that you see there from 20 fruit for $37.50 to 32 fruit for $69.99. Great price. And also what was great was that this platter was included in the $5. So I got the story behind it. It's vintage. It used to be in a Milner shop uh, displaying hats and stuff. And I just love the pattern on it. So uh, here's some photos. I already have it listed. I'll give you a close up of the design here. I mean, I really love it. I mean, it's just an incredible piece. $99.99. Now, speaking of Chris from Crispy's Toys and Treasures, he also happens to live near me in Syracuse, New York, but we have never met after all of these years knowing each other. It's the weirdest thing. We've always joked that we're gonna bump into each other, and sure enough. Hey, it's about time, man. I know, I know. <laughs> What's going on? Good to see you. Hey, we are finally meeting. <laughs> yes, indeed. Man, and you met Mrs. Primetime. I she does Some, exist. Somewhere right? over there. Oh, wait, there she is. Oh, I'm not looking. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. I love this shirt, man. Thank you. It's thank awesome. You. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, my treasure hunting shirt. I like that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I like Let's that. find some treasures. Yes, All let's right. do it.
Crispy's <laughs> Toys and Treasures, folks. Check out the YouTube channel. It's awesome. <laughs> there we are. Now this could be a problem because we're both going to go to the same sale together. And what happens if I find Lego? <laughs> as long as you call it Lego. I messed up last night. But uh, I don't know, like, what if you find comic books? I mean, this could be, there could be like a war. I'll, I'll pretend this I don't see comic books. <laughs> All right, I'll pretend I don't see Lego. All right. <laughs> Here you go, Chris. You want to, want, you think you'd look good with that kind of beard? I, I would definitely yeah. look good with a beard like All right. that. All right. <laughs> hey, look. No, no, hey, it's no, mine. I no, want it's that. Mine. No, it's, it's mine. my Santa Claus. It's, it's mine. mine. <laughs> All right, well, that was a lot of fun meeting up with Chris for the first time. But once you start fighting over Santa Claus plushes at garage sales, you know it's time to split apart and go your separate ways for the day. So uh, Chris is going to go out and look for some more treasures. I'm going to do the same. Mrs. Primetime is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> she she didn't want to be around any of that. So uh, she went off on like a speed run through the neighborhood. So who knows? We'll catch up with what she found later. And uh, I'm going to go out and look for some more treasures. Now I love the legs on this witch. No, not for that reason. Stop the music. But I love that they're made out of plastic buttons and wood beads. She's cross-eyed too, which is cool. Picked her up for just a dollar. I have her listed for $49.99 in my eBay store. Speaking of dollar purchases, here's another Dork Diaries book. I love that this one has a cool rainbow cover on it. Brought it back to PTHQ, added it to my growing lot of Dork Diaries books, and I gave it the cringeworthy double tap for good luck. And I don't know, maybe that helped me come across another cool lot. And this is all these crocheted nursery rhyme dolls. They're about seven to eight inches long. And um, there's a bunch of different cool characters in there. I'll show them to you in a moment. There were also two records that were thrown in there. Now, they were damaged as those records often are. So I couldn't use them, but didn't matter. I was really purchasing them um, uh, for these characters, which could be used in school, could use by uh, could be used by parents, you know, for their kids. But we've got little Jack Horner, we've got little Red Riding Hood with a red cushion, we've got Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. I won't finish that one. We've got the uh, rub a dub dub men. We've got the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. We've got little boy blue, and we've got Jack and Jill. So I've got them listed in my eBay store. Also for 50 bucks. Then I came across a really cool Jingle Bells blanket. Now, first, I just saw that they were caroling, saw some music notes. I've done very well with music types of throw blankets before, so always be on the lookout for those. As you open it up a little bit more, which again is a key, you've got to open these things up up to learn more about them. You see that it says Jingle Bells on there and you just keep exploring and exploring. Don't be shy. Just, you know, lay it out there on the grass. Doesn't matter. You could see it's got the music notes in there and everything. More carolers. It's got uh, fringed edges, which is always appealing. It's triple woven. Only a dollar for this one. Amazing. I've got it listed for $39.99 in my eBay store. Now, just something to be aware of, if you come across places that have these banana boxes, they are generally filled with stuff that is truly junk. I mean, it's very difficult to find something in those that are valuable. Don't get me wrong, you can, but as a general rule of thumb, that's what those things mean. You'll often see them at flea markets and also sometimes at estate sales. They'll have them there too and also garage sales. Um, now, this is something to be on the lookout for, which is a really great item. This is the Groove Tube was made by Spencer's. These could sell for 50 to 60 bucks or more, especially if it comes in the original box. You got to try to test these things out. The problem is this didn't have the light bulb inside, so we needed to search for a Type S light bulb. Finally, these Type S bulbs could be so annoying to find. They're smaller than appliance bulbs, which some lava lamps work on, but not this one. Now, you just screw the bulb into the base. You slide the glass lava tube in like that. You put the cap on top, which is really just 
decorative. And then you just slide the button to the side like that, which if the light works, it will turn on. But a lot of people make the mistake when testing these and assuming that the lava lamp works just because it lights up. But that's not necessarily the case because what needs to happen is that that bulb is supposed to heat up that coil I'm pointing to, which would then help heat up the waxy substance inside. But the problem there is that that coil is floating in the liquid. It's not resting on the bottom, which is what needs to happen. So that's a big problem. In addition to the wax having this chunky appearance, it's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look nice and solid. Now, that's probably a result of improper storage in extreme cold temperatures here in Syracuse, New York, and then, you know, being stored in the summertime, maybe in a shed somewhere. And what happened is that that waxy substance congealed to that um, coil on the bottom, so there was no way to free it, even after heating it up for hours and hours and hours. I tested it. Now, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is one of my lava lamps in a top secret location of PTHQ. You can see there how the coil is resting on the bottom, and this is just what it looks like at rest. It hasn't been heated up or anything like that, and you can see the difference in the wax composition compared to this right here. I didn't spend anything on this, so I didn't lose any money. Um, just showing you a little experiment. You're not supposed to really open these up, but since it was, you know, there was no way to salvage this, um, just showing you what it looked like inside if you start poking around at a stick. But even that didn't really free it from the coil. <laughs> Oh, that jiggly transition must mean good luck. Sure enough, as I walk up to the top right of this garage sale, I see this box with two calculators in them. All I had to do is open up the lids there and look at that, the TI-83 Plus, not just one, two of them. Uh, got some batteries, tested both of them, and they worked, which was awesome because two of those babies could sell for 60 bucks. Got them for a buck a piece. Now, this garage sale was insane. I had so much fun here. For me, the more disorganized and chaotic, the better because it increases the chance I'll be able to find a hidden treasure. I started off with this $1 vintage metal ice cream sign. It says double dip and freezy on it. I have it listed in my eBay store already for $49.99. The guy selling this stuff was an antiques dealer for 30 years. He's retired and he was liquidating his stuff at rock bottom prices. He didn't even know everything he had. I asked if he had comic books. He said no. And sure enough, I find a 1960 Little Lulu comic book underneath those pieces of paper. Not the most desirable title, but it still does sell. The colors were nice and bright still. You could sell this one for about 15 bucks, but I'm going to add it to my other ones. Now, I normally pass up on Jim Beam decanters because they're so overproduced and not that desirable, but this one is an exception because this water tower has a railroad theme to it, so guys would love to integrate this water tower into their own railroad system. It's especially desirable because it has the original box, which is in great shape. So I picked this one up for just $5, and I have it listed in my eBay store for $125. Always look for vintage circus stuff. I've always found that it sells well. This is a really cool vintage Tigress Shriner circus poster from the War Memorial here in Syracuse, New York. I love the big elephant, the clown, the yellow, the red. Picked it up for a dollar. I have it listed for 50 bucks. Now, this is definitely something to be on the lookout for, flower bags. Yes, people use them, people collect them, people buy them, especially if they have cool characters on them like Snow White. I got them both for a dollar and have them listed for 30. And yes, I did purchase the Snoopy lunch bags. Now, also look for flower bags that have something distinctive on them, like those five red X's in the middle. I mean, who's not going to love something with five red X's on it? Now, also look for things associated with certain cities and states. So these are marked that they're from Purdy, Virginia. So people from there will like them. Same deal. Got them both for a buck and have them listed for 30. This one is also from Virginia. It's from Winchester. Now, the family's joy brand 
doesn't normally come in 25 pound bags. So the fact that this one is so big allowed me to up the price on it. Got it for a buck, listed for 50. Always look for items specific to your region. A great example here is Dome Sweet Dome. It's a compilation of newspaper comic strips regarding the Syracuse University sports teams. Don't normally see this one. Picked it up for 50 cents and have it listed for 20 bucks. Always dig, dig, dig to the bottom of those boxes. You might find big treasures. You might find small treasures like this 1976 Happy Days trading card pack. It's new, unopened, still has the bubble gum. Gave it to me for nothing, and I sold it on eBay for 10 bucks. Now, this Lucky Strikes Frisbee isn't worth anything, but keep digging and flipping because this 1950s If Worlds of Science Fiction magazine digest is a good pickup. If you have big enough lots of these, even at later dates, you could sell them for well over $200. Even individual issues from that era could sell for around $30 with shipping. Now, this here is a cast iron damper. It's four inches. Don't mind the rust. People still buy them like that and like it like that sometimes. Uh, if you had a brand name on it, that would help it. This one doesn't. With a brand name on it, you could sell it for around 30 bucks. Without the brand name, I have it listed for $22.50. Now, now, this was cool as well. Uh, there was this red box I saw to the side, and I saw it said Coca-Cola on it. I was like, wait a minute, hold on, let's look inside. And sure enough, it's a really cool chalkboard sign. It still hasn't even been opened on the bottom. Like, it still has the original cellophane with the chalk and the eraser and everything. Picked it up for three bucks and I have it listed for $50. All right, we're back. Now stay tuned for another funny Daisy moment. But first, it's member spotlight time, so make sure you check out the eBay store of Suzanne. Many of you know of her as Farm Girl Picker. She's awesome, so supportive, often in the comment section, and that is where you will find a link to her eBay store. There's also a link to it in the description section of this video. This is something I do for all members at any level. I also put a link to your eBay store or wherever it is that you sell for 24 hours in my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. I pin it to the top of the announcement section. It's brought a lot of people additional exposure to their stores and many members have made multiple sales when they were featured. So if you're interested, click the join button to find out more about it. And now, Let's go check out what Daisy's doing. Daisy? Oh, Daisy sees Gizmo. <laughs> there he is. There's your, <laughs> there's your boyfriend. <laughs> He'll come around again, don't worry. <laughs> Daisy, you can't show him that much how much you love him. Okay? You gotta play hard to get a little more. Don't worry, I'll be back. <laughs>